He doesn't have a lot of money. Just don't depend on my grandparents because they have their own problems. Ah yes, I was wondering when these two would talk about money, especially considering Brandon's dropped everything and emptied out his bank account in order to move to the Philippines. All while neither of them have a job. I don't know what he makes on the farm or what he spends his money on. I know he didn't spend it on the house. I'm the one who did that, so a little loan could go a long ways for us. It's week two, and already Brandon wants to borrow money from Mary's granddad. He's running out of money fast. Now, before we dive into their money problems, let's rewind back to the start of this episode. So, when we last saw the pair, Mary was recovering from a panic attack, and Brandon was left triggered. The way she's been treating him since he's arrived in the Philippines has left him feeling worthless. It's reminded him of the darkest time in his life. So after each of them apologised, and I'm not quite sure why Brandon felt the need to do so, but after their apologies, where does their relationship stand now? After I told Brandon that I will try my best to trust him, I am so happy that me and Brandon were able to make up. Now, we left them with Mary promising that she'd try to trust Brandon. No guarantees. But frankly, after everything that Brandon's already done for her, surely she should already be trying. Like, why is this only now happening? You get the feeling this isn't the first time she's made that promise. So, what are they up to today? Well, Mary is taking Brandon to her old family home. <laughs> Not as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> My brother is starting to fix it. Our old house got ruined by Typhoon Odette. Tragically, Mary's family home was destroyed by a typhoon. Not only did they lose their home, they also lost most of their belongings. The new house that they've built is on much higher ground. It's much safer for them all. And of course, they have Brandon to thank for that, because he's the one who funded the house for them. Brandon's emptied out his pockets, emptied his bank account to ensure that they had somewhere to live. But now there's a problem. He has no money left. We need to find a way to make money because we pretty much used like all the money I had left to build that. So there's two ways to look at this. On the one hand, it's really wholesome that Brandon was so sure about his relationship with Mary that he was willing to invest every last cent he had into ensuring she and her family would stay safe. That says a lot about his character, the kind of man he is. Remember, he'd never even met her in person. But on the other hand, on a personal level, on a financial level, it was a really stupid move. He's now literally broke. He's got nothing left. He doesn't even have enough to afford a plane ticket home if everything goes south. I was the breadwinner for me and Mary in America. Every single time I got paid, I would send her most of my paycheck if not all of it, to pay for the house, pay for the bills, and for her to get data for her phone. Wait, let's just get this straight. Brandon was working three odd jobs so that he could send Mary money just so she'd have enough data on her phone to video call him 24-7. A rule she put in place. A rule that actually cost him jobs because of her non-stop calling. Someone make it make sense. It's all just so twisted and ridiculous. And from the sounds of it, with only $306 left to his name and with no plan, these two are now left scrambling. So what do you think we're going to be able to do? I can make necklaces and we can sell it. Okay, I can help. But it's like a small amount of money. Yeah, great plan. Let's make some seashell necklaces. That's really going to solve your problems. How old are you? 12? Like, it blows my mind that this is the first time they appear to be talking about this. They're completely unprepared for the upcoming month's bills, and they're talking about selling necklaces. Remember, these two are 23 years old. They've been through so much in life, yet they're constantly reminding us, in many ways, they're still children. But Brandon thinks he may have a potential solution to their problem. He suggests they ask Mary's granddad for a loan. 
The problem is, she immediately shuts down this idea. She doesn't have a lot of money. Just don't depend on my grandparents because they have their own problems. Of course, I get that Brandon has helped them. He's hoping that they might be able to help him back. But I think that's very flawed thinking. Like, Mary's granddad is a farmer. He's hardly rolling in money. He's just lost his home. That, while they didn't expressly say so, almost certainly would have also impacted his farming, right? The typhoon would have affected his crop, the harvest. So I doubt he'll be able to help them. And Mary tears up as she explains she doesn't want to put any more stress on her grandparents. He already sacrificed a lot. I don't want to make him stress. Okay. So please, just... Yeah, I get that. I'm not making him stress. He's old. Mary's clear that asking her granddad for a loan will stress him out. And you can understand that. Like Mary said, he's old and he's old school. He has very traditional values. He wants to know he's leaving his granddaughter in the hands of a man that can provide for her. So asking him for money so soon after moving isn't going to give him the best impression of Brandon. But just talking about this yet again triggers Mary's emotions. She begins to cry. And once again, we see her have trouble breathing. I'm not going to him with this. I never he deserves talked. to be happy. He, he does. sacrificed a lot when I was a kid. He sent me to college. I don't want to be stressed. Well, it seems to me you're the one stressing. And he's absolutely right. She is the one stressing. She's worked herself up into a panic. But Brandon tries to explain to her this was just an idea. It was just a suggestion. He wasn't going to go and approach her granddad without her permission. But once again, this just shows us what a bad job Mary does with controlling her emotions. Like, if she can't sort this out, Brandon is going to have a very tough future ahead of him. How can you ever have a conversation with someone when, at the drop of a hat, the second things turn serious, she's just going to get overly emotional? I definitely wasn't expecting Mary to react this way. It's a bit much. Judging by his reaction, the fact that he's not willing to drop the subject, I get the impression that Brandon seems annoyed about the whole situation. Can I say something now? Just go talk, Brandon. I don't know what he makes on the farm or what he spends his money on. I know he didn't spend it on the house. I'm the one who did that. What alone could go a long ways for us. I completely understand Brandon, and he is kind of right. He's been the one supporting the entire family. He's paid all of the bills. He's put a roof over their heads. So despite being elderly, Mary's granddad is still working. Presumably, he must have an income. He must make some money. So is it really that bad to ask him to contribute towards the bills of the house he's living in rent-free? But that's Brandon's perspective. We also need to look at this from Mary's perspective. For her, culturally, it's a big taboo to ask your grandparents to pay for things. She should be the one taking care of them. She can't imagine asking them for rent, asking them to pay for the bills. It's unheard of. And ultimately, right or wrong, it just shows that Brandon should have come to the Philippines with a plan in place for how he's actually going to make a living. It turns out hoping to get money from the family who have been living off him isn't exactly a great plan. Now, what also adds to Brandon's irritation here is that Mary expresses the view that because he's from America, things are presumed to be easier for him. So there's an expectation that he should pay. In America, you don't struggle like this, like us. Other countries think that America is like great. In America, everyone struggles too. Considering everything that Brandon's been through, Mary's words are really thoughtless here. She knows what Brandon's been through in his life. She knows the tough times he's had. She knows he's been homeless. He's had his family ripped apart due to drugs. He's had to live in his car. So, okay, poverty in the Philippines and poverty in the US might not be the same. But I don't know why she felt the need to make this into a contest for who struggled more. 
that's not really relevant to the problem they're currently facing. Here in the Philippines, not all people will get support. They poop everywhere, poop in the river, so he didn't experience the real struggle. Right, and that is really sad to hear. But it doesn't change the fact that these two need to make plans urgently for what they can do for money. Because Mary is ruling out her grandparents as an option. This situation they find themselves in, this predicament, is entirely because neither of them seem to plan ahead. And even now, what between Mary's panic attacks and the general lack of ideas, planning definitely doesn't seem to be their strong suit. Rather than presenting any specific ideas, all they can say is a very vague... We can find a way to work it out ourselves. Maybe we can just use this as an opportunity to grow for it. Yeah. Is it just me, or would Mary's college degree have sure been helpful right about now? I wonder if we're ever going to learn the truth about that one. Was it really Brandon that asked her to drop out? Or is that one of Mary's embellished truths? He sent me to college. I don't want him to be stressed. He didn't pay for your college. You had a scholarship. Either way, these two are in a very sticky situation and it's entirely of their own doing. It's time for them to take responsibility and grow up.